As a result, I went to prison. And I, I, I don't believe I would have ever gone to prison if Philly testified and just told the truth. Philly Walters is the author of Gambler, Secrets from a Life at Risk, and also a member of the first ever Hall of Fame class for sports gambling. Philly, it's great to talk with you. The book is incredible. Your life, incredible. Your success betting on sports, incredible. So I got to ask, has Hollywood been itching or reaching out to you? Because this book needs to be turned into a movie. Well, thank you for your kind words, and it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, we've talked to a few people. Whether it's going to happen or not, I don't know. But my main focus is is to get the book out, and uh, and uh, we'll worry about anything else that comes later on. Your relationship with Phil Mickelson, it's been very public. You dedicate an entire chapter to him called Lefty and Me, and you don't really have a problem with how much he's bet. You say it's around a billion dollars based on his annual revenue and his net worth you, you don't have a problem with the amount but you do have it seems like a problem with his moral compass he took 200 million dollars to join live golf didn't testify on your behalf when you really think it, it could have went a long way he tried a, a, approaching you about betting on a tournament that he was involved in and you say in the book that the public is starting to see a side of him that people on the tour the pga tour or others on the inside have always known so I have to ask, what is that side of him? Well, I mean, first and foremost, <clears throat> Phil's a very small part of my book. These two chapters are 28. And the only reason Phil's in the book, it's not about, about it's not because of, of our gambling relationship we had. We were partners together, betting on sports together for five years. We were friends for eight years. And frankly, I thought we were friends. And uh, I kind of pride myself of being a good judge of character. And uh, I think it's probably what hurt me more than anything when uh, when it came time to come forward and do nothing but simply tell the truth uh, in regards to a, a court case that I had in New York for insider trading. Phil didn't do that. He uh, he allowed uh, me to go up there without testifying as he had, he, had, he had told the FBI on two previous occasions. And as a result, I went to prison. And I I, I don't believe I would have ever gone to prison if Phil had testified and just told the truth. And uh, unfortunately, when I was in prison, we, we had a family tragedy. My wife, my daughter committed suicide. So the stuff that I have in Phil, uh, in there, in regards to Phil, I, I, I owe it to the reader to be able to explain how we met, what our relationship was. And uh, the gambling part that's in there is only in there for one reason. And that's to explain what our relationship was. And the other part is, is obviously uh, for uh, the reader to see uh, you know, the, the amounts that were involved. I think from a credibility standpoint, uh, that's the reason I like Charles Barkley. I may not agree with everything Charles says, but when Charles says something, I believe it. Uh, the records that I put in the book were our five-year partnership. Uh, we have documented records on every bet we've made, who we made it with, when we made it, whether we won or whether we lost. We keep those for tax purposes. As far as him trying to bet on the Ryder Cup, no question he tried to bet on the Ryder Cup. He called me. And when he called me, I was shocked. I said, you lost your mind. I told him, I said, don't you know what happened to Pete Rhodes? I said, you know, you're looked at as a modern day Arnold Palmer. You would risk your entire career uh, to do this. I, I said, I don't want any part of it. He never made the bet. Uh, prior to that, we never had one discussion about any golf betting or anything else or anyone else betting on golf. After that, we never had another discussion. And he never made the bet. And uh, that, was, uh, that was exactly what happened in regards to that. What do you think about these NFL players getting suspended for placing bets, whether it's on their team, on football, college basketball. The NFL very much in bed with a lot of the sports book operators now, but yet they're coming down really hard on some of their players. Well, with all due respect, I think the league's got a responsibility. And these guys, the majority of them, just kids, are coming straight out of college. And and I think, you know, the teams, I think the league, I think they need to to really sit down and educate these young men and explain to them the ramifications of what they're doing. And I don't think they need to have one meeting with them. I think this is something that needs to happen on a regular basis. You gotta understand, the majority of these people are kids and everybody wants to bet on themselves. We're all competitive. I mean, whether, whatever sports you're involved with, they, they simply don't understand the ramifications they're risking their career. They also, I don't think, understand what their, what their obligation is to their teammates and, 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 the, and the sports league that they play for. But I think the majority of that is education, and I think that uh, people need to spend some time with them uh, on an ongoing basis to, uh, to continue to remind them of that.
From what I know about this, the amount of money they bet was nothing anyway. Uh, these people make plenty of money, and I think they had any idea that they were going to risk their career in doing this. None of them would do it. The thing that concerns me more than anything is the NC2A. You really got kids there. The good news about sports betting is it's very easy to see if, in fact, someone is doing something to manipulate the line or to bet significant amounts of money. It's not like Wall Street. First of all, whoever you bet with, they got 100% of your information. Second of all, if someone goes in and tries to bet a large amount of money, the line's going to move. The market's much, much smaller. And if it happens, something out of the ordinary, some person who is not normally a big better, they come in and a, a significant amount of money gets bet, the line moves. People are looking at this. They're going to look for the source of who made the bet. If it's out of the ordinary. And the second time the guy comes in and the same thing happens, uh, they may get down for two or three bets. They're going to get nailed. It's happened every time in sports. Sports gamblers have, have basically, uh, they, they're, they've been the ones that have, you know, uncovered these these scandals in sports. That's why sports are so clean. Now, clearly, now you, you've got legalized gambling, you've got kids involved that, that need, uh, they need counsel. Uh, but I can assure you one thing, uh, because of the nature of, of the sports market and the size of it, no one's going to bet a significant amount of money on sports uh, and get by with it for any period of time if they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. You had 36 straight years of beating the sports books. It's legendary. People don't even have a week of beating the sports book. 36 years of doing it is incredible. Along the way, you've had some bad beats, some bad weeks, some bad months, but always have come out on top at the end. What is the mentality of trying to get through those slumps and, and, and just sticking to your process? Well, first of all, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've worked with some of the smartest people that you can imagine over those years. And uh, the uh, I've spent millions of dollars on uh, every year and the research and development to stay ahead of the game. But uh, if you understand anything about whether it be in, whatever you invest in, you know you may have a mathematical advantage, but you can go for a period of time and and you can lose. And if you if you if you don't have a money management system, you play too high for your bankroll, uh, you can get broke and, and still have the best of something. So you've got to really have discipline. You've got to stick to what you know. And betting on sports and winning consistently is much more difficult than investing in the stock market. And uh, it's because, uh, it, you know, and of course, investing in the stock market requires that discipline also. But uh, betting on sports is uh, you've got to have a lot of discipline. You've got to believe in what you're doing and sticking with it. But you've also you got to continually get better at what you're doing because the people you're competing with they're all getting smarter, uh, and it's it's a competitive environment. But over the years, I spent millions and millions and millions of dollars to uh, to stay out of the game. There's a great story uh, in your book that you bet on the direction of which way a bird would fly off a wire. Pretty odd thing to bet on. What's the strangest thing you ever took money on, or you ever took action on? That, that, that probably was it. I didn't take any action on it. I owned a bookmaker. I owed him more than I could pay him. And he came in to collect, and, uh, and I was working at a car lot at the time, and I've been watching this bird for a long time, and, and I knew, you know, the bird went that way every time, so of course, you know, anything can happen. But uh, I owed a bookmaker 4000 all he had two, I was too light. So uh, I ended up getting him to bet me uh, on the bird. And uh, anyway, I bird went the way I thought he was going to go, and uh, I got my package back, and uh, but that was probably one of the dumbest things I've ever been on. But I've been on some pretty stupid things. Uh, Mattress Mac, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with his name. He, he makes some big, sizable bets. Kind of offsets it with his business promotion. He makes big bets, doesn't always win. Do you have any advice for him? I really don't. I think he's more of a businessman. I think he's doing these for promotions. I think he's got a lot of publicity, and uh, if that's what he's doing, then man, go for it. Uh, I think it's good, and. Uh, and I think it's it's great that he's doing what he's doing as long as that's what he's doing. I'm sure that's what he's doing. It's his business, and uh, so I'm I'm a I'm a big mattress Mac fan. Uh, Michael Jordan, also another notorious gambler. You ever meet MJ on the golf course or in the casino? I played a casual round of golf. It's, it's in the book uh, with MJ. I'm a huge, huge fan of his, and uh, we played a real friendly round of golf for a hundred bucks, and uh, we had a great time. I had a great time with him. He's one of the uh, most unassuming guys I've ever met. We shared a story that 
Eastern North Carolina, out from Kentucky, we shared a story of working in the back of cups together. And, uh, but uh, that was a one and only, and, uh, but I'm a huge, huge fan of his. All right, my last question for you. you. You've been somewhat shy, maybe even distrusting of the media. You admit to trying to stay out of the spotlight, uh, but you also write about seizing every opportunity to leave a legacy that might inspire others. So, uh, Billy Walters, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I, w I want my legacy to be, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, my word was my bond. I did what I said I would do. Uh, I helped others. The sports betting encyclopedia I put in there, uh, I think that's going, I don't think, I know it's going to help anyone who bets sports. And hopefully it's something they'll be able to enjoy for a long, long period of time and, and enhance their enjoyment of sports. But more importantly, uh, like I said, uh, it's important to me that uh, people uh, you know, respect me as far as being a man of his word and, uh, and helping others. Billy Walters is the author of Secrets from a Life at Risk. Whether you bet on sports, love to be competitive, you're an entrepreneur, rags to riches, if you love all that stuff, this book is for you. Absolutely incredible. Billy Walters, pleasure to talk to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.